before anybody says anything. I know I'm missing a button. Right there. I hate for people to, to comment below and say anything, let alone that I'm missing a button. All right. Soldier. We're still working on the uh, suspenders now. I'm going to pull you over here so you can see what I'm doing because I'm pulling stuff up on the computer. You can't see it where you're at, but you can see it over there. Oh. Move things around a little bit. Everything's much wider now. I kind of like that. Put it on my mail mannequin. Um, it'll make things a little easier. Stand's not very stable. So here's the uh, the render. The first thing we're going to do, take these off, is cover both sides in tape. About what I think they should be, or at least close to it. I have a pin that I've measured from uh, the belt, the in scale for the, uh, the strap. Part. All I'm going to do is layer up a couple of pieces of uh, painter's tape here. Because those aren't straight. They're actually kind of curved. And I know I want the end to be about four inches. The flatter we can make this, the better. So I'm not trying to make that shape. I'm just putting something down that I will be able to uh, draw on top of. Because we're making a template. I didn't find any templates I really like. If I try to peel this off, these are all, all these set lines are going to come off in segments. So I'm also going to uh, cross every piece and then put another row that way. I'm going to move you over here so we're perpendicular so you can see what I'm doing a little easier. So all I'm doing is covering these seams so when we peel it off, it comes off as one solid piece. This is going to ensure that it's form fitting. Looks like it comes back. This way pretty extreme because it almost touches right here make sure you overlap as much as you can I want this tape to come as close to both edges as possible because that will ensure that everything is nice and uh, woven in place we're basically just making a big basket weave and if it overlaps and sticks out doesn't matter because it's going to get um, trimmed anyway so we're just drawn in since these two uh, pieces are symmetric, I only have to do this once. And I'll just flip the pattern over. This mannequin has, of course, been sized to my specifications. Because, you know, I'm making the piece for me. So I wanted it about four inches. That's about four. Four is off to here. So we're going to go over this way, over towards the edge a bit more. When I take everything apart, I have to be very careful of these two pieces I just put on because they only have one layer. So now I just want to draw these shapes on this mannequin. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. Yeah, the more, the closer to where I it, where I want it to be, the better. But if I'm a little off, then I'm a little off. We're gonna go about four inches. There's a strap that hangs down here. So then, do the same thing for the front. I've measured the game asset from the belt up, so I know roughly where they think it should be. But you know, again, polygons aren't people. And it's going to do the same thing as the other side does. Except there's a line that goes almost straight to there. So it goes from here to there. I think I need to straighten this out a little more. It's about one inch in. Puts me right about there. This tape is one inch, right? Roughly. Just gonna draw the strap in. But I'm gonna do it with tape. It's from here to about there. Looks like it comes right about to the point there. Beginning to think that these straps are a little straighter than I think they are. Which absolutely works in our advantage. And that looks right to me. 
So now, if I did my job right, I should be able to just peel this right up. But I'm not gonna. Now that a couple more pieces of tape, just to make sure everything's all super connected. And there, it's our pattern piece. It does look relatively straight. Not perfectly, because it does have kind of a slight curve to it here. Next step is to uh, trim everything up, mark it on the, on the leather, and then uh, cut everything out. Before I cut this out, I'm going to take just some simple copy paper, lay it out as flat as I can. Then I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to try and clean these lines up just a little bit. I don't expect it to be exactly four inches the whole way. Not bad. I like it. I think it'll work. I'm going to trace it onto the back side of the leather, two of them. And I've also got another leather that we're going to deal with in a couple of minutes too. I want the stability and the rigidity I'm going to get out of this thick hide. But I need flexibility to, to get all the detail I'm going to get, which is where the brown leather is coming in. I'm also going to sandwich a one inch strap in the middle. So when we glue it down, it's got that ridge line that these t seem to have. So I'm going to grab my piece of lumber, put it back down so I can cut all this without messing with my uh, cotton mat. I know, this is a fantastic cutting mat. Do I use it? No. Why? Because it's a hassle to get to. And that is the nature of crafting an organization. The more organized you are and the easier it is to get your tools, the more likely you are to use the right tools for the right job. So I'm trying to cut this relatively exact. All the people on YouTube make these huge, like, you know... Man, most of those guys have, have deals with, with leather providers to sponsor their channels and stuff, right? I don't, I don't know about you. I don't have a leather sponsor. So I want to use as much of it as I can. I normally get my leather from Tandy, but that's because there's one in Elgin, which isn't too terribly far from me. If there was a weaver close, I'd probably go check them out too. So now I have these. Let's see how it looks before we get too far, before we get all, you know, ahead of ourselves. Pop them on the mannequin. See what we got. On this side, yeah, that's it's pretty close. That's what I want. We're getting there. Nice need a couple of straps. We'll be good to go. All right. So these get a one inch um, belt. So I'm going to mark that and we're going to contact cement it. I have this so the um, good side is down because I'm going to glue to it and gluing to this, the, the rough side, easier. From the front it's uh, 10 inches before the start of the strap. So I'm going to go 12 inches just so I have plenty of room to play. So now that I have everything marked. I'm going to put a nice bead of contact cement down and a bead of contact cement down and then we're going to glue everything together and I'll see you then. You don't need to watch me do this. Next thing, I'm going to glue this on top of this, right? Easiest way to do that, just set it down and trace it. So I'm going to glue the edges first. Well, I'm going to contact cement the whole thing, but I'm going to glue the edges first and then kind of mold it to fit. So I'm going to stretch it out a bit. If it's a little long, I can always trim it up after the fact. I do plan on dyeing the whole thing. It does have a bunch of roots holding everything down too. But glue is really going to be the one that holds everything together. And that is the next step. 
Uh, so put them left and right. Make sure everything lines up properly for left and right. So now if you look, see it's got that seam that's going to be visible. It's what we're going for. There we go. So now I cover everything in contact cement. Luckily this one, this tiny little one, I wanted a bigger can. Couldn't find a bigger can. But it's got a cool little brush on it. I'm going to make sure I get the edges because I want the edges to glue very well. Strong. I want a lot of glue on the edges. I are wording difficult today. I want the edges to adhere to each other. And the best way to do that is to make sure there's plenty of glue on it. All right. I'll give this like five, ten minutes to cure. And then we'll uh, stick everything together. All right. said so about enough time to cure. So let's, uh, let's do this thing. Sorry, I'm not sure about that. What? That is exactly what I wanted. I'll let this sit for a minute while I go get my bone folder. Yeah, look at that. That looks perfect. Oh my goodness. So since this brown leather, or the, the dyed leather, it's thinner than the leather we use for the base. It's stretched. So now I'm just going to trim all this up. I may make this line here a bit more even, but we are getting there. I am super happy with this. I think we're going to set the back up so it matches the reference and let the front lie wherever the front happens to lie. It's a, Joy's a curved stuff, right? Oh, for the goodness. Let's get this one perfect. Put that there. As long as I make the other one match, that's what matters. So I'm going to cut this so it folds there. It goes in and folds and then flips back around. And it looks like there's a rivet right here. So that's where I want the uh, strap to end. Fold it to where I want. I'm probably going to wet mold this. Um, I may enlarge this slit or these slits enough so the leather fits through freely. Right now it's a little snug. Matter of fact, I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to open these up so, uh, so we have enough room for everything to get in. Here's where we're at. We have both straps through. Looks fantastic. I'm going to wet these and clamp them overnight so they have full time to uh, to wet mold properly. Then we'll come back to it in the morning. Not that you'll know, but it's a week and a half later. I got these all wet molded, everything's put together, it looks fantastic. My shoulder pauldrons are too tight. I expected that. I was hoping it wouldn't, but I expected it. Since they're 3D printed, they, uh, they don't quite expand right. Let me show you. What's that you say? Oh, we'll get to this. But if you look, all these little little squares, it's air. Air is a fantastic insulator. So there's no way for me to just heat a 3D print this thick and properly spread it. So I had to reprint it. And this is attempt number one. Scaled it a little bigger so, you know, I get a little more, yeah. but it was printed this way. So all this looked fantastic. That did. Attempt number two. Attempt number two. Um, yeah was attempt number two. Attempt number three isn't here because attempt number three really made me mad, but it looked a lot like one and two. And then I printed this one. It's the same size. It's a little wider. I, I made it 10% wider. Perfect. I, I, had to, I had to cut it in half, so I had to rip the model in half, change a bunch of things. I made the hole for the uh, the Chicago screw much smaller, so it's it's the cap should just go right over it and, and work. So I should just be able to Adhere that on there and not have to worry about it. Look perfect. Printed the next one. The next one didn't quite match up. I only printed, I only expanded it 10% across uh, this axis. The second one, I printed it 
10% across all of them. So the whole thing was too big. And, and I think that's just a little too big. I don't, I don't like how that looks because that would rest right about there. There's too big of a gap. So then I printed it again. Notice, because somewhere along the line I scaled these two as the same, which is different than this one. And each one of these takes 15 hours and a quarter roll of filament. It's not counting all of these, which just kept failing on me. And it's just been frustrating. But that's kind of the whole thing, isn't it? There's always something. I could have stopped at any point in time and gone, I'm done. I'm going to finish it. Uh, the other half of this one is printing right now. As soon as that one's done, I'll print another set. I'll finish them exactly the same as I finished these. So I won't have missed anything. And we'll pick up right about there. It's printed, right? Um, I had to do it in two pieces because I was fighting with the print way too much. It is bigger. A decent amount, too. Um, I'd rather have it bigger than tighter. The suspenders, if, if it's too too tight, they'll, they can move out a little bit. Or move in a little bit. You know, it's, it's always adjustable. If it's too tight, it's always just going to be too tight. I'm going to finish these off camera. We've already seen it. Last video we did this, so we'll just do that again. They fit much better. Oh my goodness, that looks so much nicer. First thing I'm going to do is these suspenders get have uh, a rivet here, here, and here. I don't know why, but that's where we're at since I pulled my reference. I always have my reference off screen, by the way. Everything's going to get finished and beveled and edged in a bit. Um, right now, I just want to make sure everything is, is ready to roll. Um, like I said, I wet formed it, so it, it, it holds its shape a bit better. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, because this is just a hair too long, I'm going to trim that off, I'm going to bevel everything, and then I'm going to put in three rivets. They're not even rivets, they're Chicago screws. Oh, this is what wet molding does, right? It's going to keep its shape much better. I have just a little bit of edging popping up. I'm just going to trim everything up, make it all nice and neat. The, the better the product, the better the product, right? I think I need a taller table. Something that I, I don't have to hunch over to, you know? I've seen people sand leather to get into this. I don't know how it feels. I suppose I could get a Dremel and try it. Let's get a Dremel, see if we can sand this. We're gonna try a small Dremel bit, just to see, because if this does make things quicker, this makes things better, then uh, that's what I'm gonna use. That worked remarkably well. Jeez Louise, what have I been cutting this whole time for? That was fantastic. Now I'm gonna edge bevel the whole thing. Let me grab a small piece of lumber so I have something to drill into. And we'll set these three rivets. Doesn't look like they're particularly placed in any order or just does seem a little weird. So it looks like there's two on the bottom, one on the top. I'm just going to drill evenly spaced holes. I don't know why you'd have three rivets right here, but I guess it just looks cool, so that's good enough. I suppose I could get a mallet. I have a mallet. Look at that. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side and uh, then we're gonna put it on the mannequin there's one screw in the back but it holds like everything together it holds the um, the shoulder the pauldrons on the belts in place so we're gonna wait with that one that's probably gonna be the first one we do when we work on the back which will be after this is taken care of so here's the hard part it's trying to make everything match at this point also if they are a little off opposite sides and it's one small facet of the entire costume we tend to get get fixated on this whole this this one bit looks a little weird but when you look at it in totality it's not that noticeable I think I want to start in the back because it's got the most just random leather floating around it judging from the picture looks like this is right about here these two points are pretty the bottom point of the pauldron it's pretty close to the bottom point there it looks to be almost 90 degrees dead center since they're symmetric i should be able to measure four inches so i'm trying to line up the strap underneath with this line the strap underneath with this hole as well i'm just going to drill through all three of them the smart thing to do would be to take it off and to move it and to set it aside well that's not bad same thing on the other side so the entertaining part left and right's the same front and back's the same also so I can take this strap off and use it as a template to make both backside straps. Now the character model has a, uh, a square strap here. I don't like that. I want it to at least have a slight curve to it. So I don't want to get caught on a bunch of stuff. So I'm taking a way oversized um, arc cutter, semi-circle cutter. 
I have this thing for a reason. I'm sitting over here deflecting, all upset that it's not working. Before I bevel it, I'm going to make the second one. That way, uh, when I do bevel, it's beveling at the same size. Edge beveling the front and back, clean it up a little bit here and there. And that's about that for these. Looks fantastic. Yeah, they're both on. They're both on there now. The glue on this one finally dried. We do the front now. The front's a little different because the front barely has any strap showing at all. It looks like it's right about there. So this is going to be a little difficult to mark. Let's measure where we're at. Mark. Drill a couple of holes. Three and a quarter. So in the new Final Fantasy, um, Zach has a strap up here as well. I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but uh, we may add that as well. I'm not sure yet. It just depends on how well these stay in place. I think once they're on me and I have arms, because this guy didn't have any arms, arms are going to lay perfect, but we'll find out. And again, because these are symmetric, I can take this one off and uh, just do the same for both of them. Just using a speed square to uh, mark this one out. And just like the other side, I'm going to uh, curve the edge. And again, if they are the tiniest bit off, it's not going to make a big difference. If I can make them perfect, I will. Oh, well, yes, I have some. Most of this is done by feel. I should probably get a smaller screwdriver. In fact, I'm fighting with this enough, I'm just going to go get a smaller screwdriver. It is amazing how long we will fight through a process just because it's the tool we have in our hand. And to get the right tool, I have to go all the way across the garage. The right tool for the right job. It's much easier with a smaller, uh, smaller screwdriver. Alright. That is not too shabby. I am super happy with that. Right, let's move you up front and center real quick so we can see what we've got. Once those go in there, that is just, it's, it's exactly what I wanted. So now we have a problem. I'm not quite sure where the, where the belt rests, right? The belt has to go at the very top of the pants. And soldiers have high-waisted pants. Um, we designed those earlier. But I won't know where the belt rests until, well, I make it. So unfortunately, I think this might be where we have to stop. I think it looks fantastic. I am extremely, extremely happy with how it's turning out. It's a process, right? Every piece, a little bit at a time, I'm gonna get there. But the, the spenders, oh my goodness. They now look absolutely perfect. The back, That's in. Just, just fantastic. Oh my goodness, is it? It's it's everything I'd hoped it would be. Um, but like I said, I can't do the rest until we get the pants done. So next week, we're working on pants. I haven't done a sewing project in a really long time. Kind of need to get back to my roots, maybe. Um, but. You're happy with how this looks, and you want to see where we're going afterwards. You know, like and subscribe, all that jazz. And I think he's turning out fantastic. And if you want to see him done, which is probably going to be the next video. Um, once the pants are done, it's just adding a couple of loops and a couple of snaps, and that's it. So if that's something you want to see, maybe think about sticking around. I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.